Hello, it's always a nervous few seconds when we're waiting for the show to start. Uh, now, we have a surprise today. I'm Stephen, by the way. Uh, we have a surprise today. Uh, we have a guest host uh, because Leland, I'm just about to invite Charlene to join me. Uh, Charlene Burke is with us today, so we'll have a totally different show as we talk about things from both sides of the pond. Good afternoon, Charlene. Good afternoon, Stephen. Good to see you. And it's, it's good to see you too. And it's good. We're both using Chrome browsers and they're working, which is good. Uh, and welcome to Romero and to uh, Cindy and to Chuck. Chuck, glad you found us. Um, basically, the Pi Talk is different to, to Blab insofar as the show starts on the hour. And there's no way as a host we can change that. So on the hour, comes up, refreshes the screen, and I get to press the start button and uh, we're away. Right, well, we we're chatting earlier, and whilst Leland's down in Michigan, you're in Idaho. Uh, Indiana. Indiana, I was close, I got the eye right. Okay. <laughs> and that's close enough for somebody across the pond, no worries. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. So in uh, Indiana, I got it right now, from now on, um, we noticed, I noticed, I mean, I used to live in the Midlands in the UK, in the middle of the UK, and there's a lot of motor industry around there. Car industry, is that something in, in Indiana? Kind of. <laughs> See, it's difficult to say that there is a specific industry within any of our states. Um, Indiana is known for, uh, in the middle of Indiana, the city of Indianapolis. So, of course, we have the Indianapolis 500 Speedway, yes. of which you have Indy cars, which I think are very similar to Formula One, but faster. And <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> just throwing it out as a possibility. Um, could be the track, too, right? That yeah, it's all yeah it could be. It could be. Yeah, no, no obstacles or, or strange turns. Um, but also, quite honestly, the city of Indianapolis, again, being central, Mm -hmm. to the state is also known for its biopharmaceutical industry and headquarters of, of large international corporations. But then you kind of move off. I mean, again, nothing for certain. We also have the trucking industry because the state is known as the crossroads mm -hmm. for our country because so many major interstate highways cross in Indi Indiana and Indianapolis. So it's very easy to transport goods from mm -hmm. our state elsewhere, just because it's easy to get on the proper road and get where you need to go. Yep, well, well we uh, too have a, a great network of motorways, but for unfortunately, the nearest to me is about 40 minutes away. Um, yes, yes. Uh, now, I thought to get things underway, uh, that we'd start to talk about where I first saw you, uh, and that was on Blab, wasn't it? Many moons ago. Oh, and so the, many. You know, it was forever ago in internet age, isn't it? <laughs> oh, very, very true, but that, that's where a lot of us uh, met up and connected. And in, in those days, when I was watching your shows, I wouldn't have dreamt of leaping into the seat and talking. Now you can't get me out of the seat. <laughs> <laughs> and that, <laughs> honestly, is a wonderful thing. Oh yeah, yeah, it is, it is. It's brought everybody closer together and it's brought the two sides of the Atlantic close together as well, um, which which is a good thing. Now, where are you broadcasting at the moment? And where do you plan to broadcast? I am not. Okay. Having said that, I don't have a regularly scheduled program as I did on Blab. The Those who were with me on Blab, I had a morning program every weekday morning at 8 a.m. I came on for an hour and it was wonderful. And then, of course, I saw, foresaw the demise of Blab, and I realized that I really don't want a daily program. Mm -hmm. So I started a group on Facebook, and the moment I started it, those who had been with me on Blab as viewers and participants in my discussions kept asking, so we, we need to do another program. You need to do something. We miss you. We want you. And so I've been toying with the idea a fire talk and smile time as doing possibly, 
this is not set in stone, although I know this is recorded. Uh, a, a 30 to 1, 60 minute program, no more than 60 minutes, possibly mm -hmm. just 30 minutes, one day a week, noon Eastern time, which is my time right now, so that it fits in with across the pond time, but Indeed. also fits in with the morning time in Australia. And uh, just do a once a week about mindset, about success, about what does it really take to be a business owner? How do you stop, um, how do you stop being an employee? How do you get yourself out of having just uh, given yourself a job mm -hmm. so that you're thinking in terms of income per week? And let's talk about being a business owner. So you're talking in terms of revenue per year you know, things like that. So that's currently where it sits. I'm looking at Mondays um, as a way to kick off the week and that's it. That's, that's hey, thanks, Daniel, <laughs> because I, I posted in Born to Stream Live, uh, which is where this uh, chat show came from. And the comment was, could you ask please? Cindy said, would, you, would I ask you when you were coming back? So uh, now I've got, a request to join us. I'm not sure. Oh, Chuck. Chuck. Uh, Chuck is fantastic. And he's saying no. Okay. I'm not saying no. I'm saying no, no, Chuck is saying no. Oh, right. Sorry, I've got somebody who, right, give us a moment. All oh, right. Okay. Fine. I'm going back to the live chat then. Chuck, Chuck is exploring. So. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Uh, right. Okay. Sorry, I had the viewers tab open and not the chat. I didn't have to uh, see that. That's okay. the problem. And the, the problem we do have um, is getting people together, isn't it? Now, it people. is. It uh, is. This is um, um, different. You know, you have a variety of live stream programs now. Nothing that has the easy reach, easy mm -hmm. to find you that Blab had. And I think um, I think it really does come down to just as any other live program what before blab is that we find the platform that works for the conversations we want to have and then promote like crazy That's it. to That's let people know where we are right in, indeed because we've got to do it ourselves I mean blab did it for us to a certain extent I mean people were channel hopping and all sorts of things were happening and it was easy to be found but now uh, it's like you, you, basically we're on our own and we've got to do our own advertising and marketing. We now, do. Might, yeah. But can I just throw something out here now? Yes. Yeah, sure. Would it not be absolutely fantastic, terrific to have a central location that those of us on Fire Talk, okay, I, announcement, I'm going to be on Fire Talk, obviously, but those of us on Fire Talk, um, have a schedule of the upcoming programs and we all promote each other via just simply the schedule for that day yeah. not promoting individual shows but maybe just promoting this calendar day of schedules promote that page out to your networks just a thought yeah. no it's a, it's a good thought because the, the fire talk front page does show featured shows and it was as we're here now it will show us being live so anybody visiting the front page can see that we're live, but they can't plan for us being live. And that's a big thing mm -hmm. uh, in people's days to be able to plan ahead and decide which shows to see. Now, on that note, uh, Smile Time have announced that they're going to start communities. Which, really? Which in, incorporates into the site. Now, that's, a, that's also a game changer, isn't it? Because if there's a it community is. attached to the site itself, uh, yes, yes, possible. that is. And that's what, the only reason I was looking at Smile Time, to be honest, is that it had a direct live stream to Facebook. It does. Right? So I could have, if people wanted to actually join me on the screen, they could. But more importantly to me is that on Facebook, notifications went out to everybody that could see me live there in Facebook, right? Yeah. But I was planning to use Smile Time for like three to five minutes which would be prep for the Monday afternoon show. So just three to five minute tidbits, maybe a mindset thing, maybe a tip of being a business owner, maybe a, a, a how-to of some sort as it relates to the, the group that I have called the Grow Alliance. And then on Mondays, prep yourself for the week. 
right? Mm. So maybe, yeah. see, I'm already planning the show. So yes, there it is. So we start on Monday and then through Smile Time, I would do, let's follow up on what we talked about on Monday and make sure that we're all on moving forward with whatever the topic was for Monday. That would be the idea because Fire Talk doesn't go directly into Facebook. It's just a little bit um, troublesome. Well, it's, it's, multiple clicks to get in. Well, the, the the problem is that you've got to have a piece of software in between. I mean, we now are on the uh, Fire Talk website, and uh, things are working wonderfully well. Um, but once you want to take this out and put it Facebook Live, you need a piece of software like OBS or Remix, and that makes it complicated because yeah, it does. It's, it's, once you get to that stage, it's down to how powerful your PC or portable is, and and you. You're becoming a show producer then. I mean, there's a difference, isn't there? I mean, turning up to host a show, you can prepare for, but we don't have anything to do now apart from watch the people talking and talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whereas it gets more complicated if, if we try to get this to Facebook Live. I know Jonathan was trying that. He was going to Facebook Live and YouTube Live and a lot of other lives. I know. I was watching him and Leland and others experimenting, and I just left it to them because I don't want to be the, the big producer, right? I'm not one. There was a time I would have gotten into all the details of every bit of the technology, but I've had to lift myself away from that as a business owner so that I could focus on the higher level and have other people do the tech stuff. And I really... I was experimenting with OBS and Facebook Launch Live, the interim gap to go to live stream, and you are absolutely right. That got complicated, but it also, having that additional step of an additional piece of technology means one more thing that can go wrong, one more thing that can go, you know, and yep, then you yep. just sit there with a the strange look in frozen mode. <laughs> True, and we did that on Blabber, and we can do it on Fire Talk and Hutter and Crowdcast, all the same sort of technology. And, and we know that if, if it's working well, it's going to stay that way. But when it goes wrong, we've got problems beyond our control. And the more bits you've got in between, the more difficult it is. It's more it, complicated. I mean, yeah. this chatting now is enjoyable. Being the producer, as you said, becomes stressful. And we don't yes, need that, do that's we? It. That's it. It's stressful and a bit cumbersome. I think it's interesting that um, in the chat we have Chuck saying that maybe it's not a good idea to have easy Facebook crossover. And then we have the other gentleman saying that most people don't want to leave Facebook. So I'm, I'm going to say there's a reason I want to do direct Facebook Live, that I want that entry into the Facebook platform. And it's because that video is saved on whatever pl on whatever profile that I go to pro to Facebook through. Yeah. So now there's a history of videos on my page or my personal profile or my group, whichever I decide to move into. It'll be from my page, just so you know. Um, but truly, now we have a marketing piece. Now we have a piece of content that can now be repurposed elsewhere without... Yeah any additional steps, right? Whereas the other side is I have to download the video or I have to manually upload to YouTube to save, which I could still do, but I would still then have to upload to Facebook. Whereas by going live, notifications are sent out to everybody on Facebook who's attached to me. All it takes is somebody commenting and suddenly it's in somebody else's network. The Facebook network is incredible. After views are fantastic. I mean, I, just my test videos, I get people saying, hey, I saw you and it's great. And yeah. I'm like, well, that was six hours ago, but cool, yeah. thank you. Yeah. you know? it, it, I mean, so. Facebook, Facebook acts like a recorder, doesn't it? Like a video recorder. Because you do the live show and then people happen upon it when they log into Facebook later in the day. Yeah. Um, just, to, uh, uh, just to introduce everybody to everybody, just for a moment. Please. Yeah, uh, right. The people with us today, uh, Chris, you... Chuck, you already know. Uh, I do. Um, Spy Gadget Rentals, we know, is on most of a lot of our shows. Um, Cindy, welcome. And Black Caesar is actually Carlos Romero. And he oh, and I, Carlos. Exactly. Hey. And he and I hooked up uh, before we got to Blab on a website called empire.cred or yeah. Empire Avenue, whichever way you want to call it. 
both okay. the same, same sort of thing. So we've known each other for quite a while. And he and I did a uh, um, smile time this morning. And that went out to uh, his uh, Facebook page. So From tell me point. then, I've just told you, because I'm at the beginning now, I've let everybody else do all of the experimentation. Yeah, <laughs> so, okay. so I know that smile time will work for me and I know fire talk will work for me. And that's all I am going to do at this point. But you've now been talking about you did smile time this morning. Why was that different than doing fire talk? What are you using it for? Oh, right, okay. Um, basically, the situation is that I run six shows. Uh, and one of those is a show called RawChoc.tv, which is all about raw, cho raw chocolate. One of my friends is, is actually Willy Wonka. He owns a chocolate factory. Oh, uh, I, I, I want to be your friend, Stephen. <laughs> I want to be your friend, please. <laughs> yes, certainly. I, I, I went, I'll introduce you to Dan and Paula. They, 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 um, I did an interview with them, uh, two interviews with them. It was a business interviews uh, in the days of Blab. And I said to him, you need to have a show. And he said, well, what could the show be about? And I said, well, it can be about raw chocolate. The first bit can be a uh, history of raw chocolate, what raw chocolate is. And then you can bring in a recipe and then you can bring in a guest. So on each show, we have uh, an introduction to raw chocolate, a recipe and a guest. And it lasts 30 minutes. Now it's on Fire Talk. We were on Blub, we're now on Fire Talk, but it's audiences. So he and I were live on Smile Time this morning, testing it out to see whether we could actually use it for the Raw Chocolate TV show. And uh, he came to the conclusion, because it's his decision, that we can. So uh, every third Wednesday, we'll be live on Facebook uh, at 2 p.m. EC. Um, and that is a Raw Chocolate show with giveaways. I'm also responsible for a show called Blubbing from Britain, uh, which is every Thursdays at 10 a.m. U.S. British summer time. So that's too early on the Eastern coast, but it is blubbing for Britain. And we've got our own uh, friends and audience there. Um, and then on Friday this week, I've got another show. My partner is uh, a German tutor and translator, and she is uh, hosting, co-hosting her first show, which is for anybody who's learning German. Oh. And that will be here on Fire Talk and basically be able to uh, to talk um, and ask questions about German. So those are three of the shows. I've got another three besides, but I don't want to go on and on. But I, I have six shows, and I'll put the link later so people can check up. But you're crossing over into multiple platforms. Is it because of your co-hosts? Uh, I, I guess my ultimate question is, do you have a preference? Ah, uh, no. If you'd asked me okay. the question last week, it would have been Fire Talk and Fire Talk. This week, uh, the show that I did with Dan this morning attracted 200 views and 50 people commenting, That's big. which I haven't seen since the blab days, the beginning yeah. of blab. Now you're seeing why I like smile time to go into Facebook. Yeah, <laughs> indeed, because it works. It simply works. And uh, on that basis, we can bring uh, Carlos in to tell us. Oh, yes. Uh, invite. Carlos in. So Carlos is going to join us. And we were chatting this morning, so hopefully everything will be set. As I say, yes. Okay. There he is. There he is. Good afternoon. Hi, uh, Charlene. Good to meet you. Good to meet Good you, to meet Carlos. you, Carlos. Yeah, I thought it was interesting what you were asking uh, uh, to Steve about with uh, using the uh, smile time. Uh, because now what I was doing, and it, as Steve mentioned, he and I have been friends for quite some time. I'm actually coming out of the telecom industry back in the 90s, where we pioneered it in a little different fashion by streaming uh, TV over the early microwave to a set-top box. That was like the <laughs> forerunner of the cell phone. So there weren't cell phones. But what uh, the approach that I'm trying to do that you may find interesting is one is a network approach because now this variety of platforms where it's the streamers uh, advantage to choose whatever platform applies like 
One time you may need fire talk for something, another time smile time. There's another instance where I like to use something called stagehound, where it has three screens and the center one can put in uh, YouTube. But what's important in my experiments, I'm actually an avant-garde artist that is into music too, why I have all these crazy uh, nicknames. So I fit in with the, uh, you know, the, the, the group that I'm moving with, whether it's young hip hop artists, whether it's avant-garde artists and so on. But at any rate, what, what happens on Facebook that I had been experimenting with is I have a verified page for my network and for my artwork called Eco House. So on my Sea Pirate network page, I can add in an admin or a moderator that can then go on and do a show so that it appears that I'm running a network like ABC or, or, or the BBC. And that's where I'm trying to go with mm-hmm. Steve and Healy because my object as an artist is connecting people, using them as paint across borders now that you have the, the, uh, the, the internet. You know, I can, like he said, he can connect with you in Indianapolis and he's across the pond. I've got a friend who does hip hop music from Scotland and, uh, and from the UK guys are dying to, Hey, nobody listens to us in the U S. So now we have this platform. You guys have been more on the, uh, business side, Mm -hmm. but really lends itself to the arts and the entertainment side, which no one is really exploring, uh, I don't think. I, I agree. I mean, there's great potential, certainly on the small time platform, because the, the thing is what you want to be able to do is to be able to under, handle a large number of people. And small time have handled half a million people watching at one time, which right. we, can only dream, we can dream of, but at least we know that if you put a show on and you get a few hundred, a few thousand viewers, it's still going to work. Right. Because now, uh, as Stephen was saying, he had a ton of viewers this morning. And as you were asking and Chuck was thinking about, because people love to stay on Facebook. They go on there. They stay on there. They see that, like I did, oh, Stephen Healy is, is live. That's yeah. exciting. You know that Stephen is going to do something that, you know, makes a lot of sense. And And for one other example... I have a group that's from Detroit and I talked them into coming and taking over my network while they were on a Midwest tour. So they're in your state in Indianapolis and I'm trying to get them. Hey, listen, you know, show the crowd, show on stage. They just get on the cell phone and they just go, hi. Yeah. We're live in Indianapolis and uh, yeah. uh, Hi to see. Bye. Bye. We'll see you. (laughs) You They just don't get it yet. Uh, no. So, so know. I think what the, what my concern is and why I've waited and allowed everybody else to do all the explorations. I love what you're doing, Carlos. Love that you're doing it for the arts and entertainment industry. My focus is very tight. The people that I want to attract is very, very specific and very tight. I think that for my purposes, I need to select the right now the one platform that works that gets me onto facebook live right Mm -hmm. um for the for the daily three to five minute it's very specific it's um and it's got to be it has to be consistent it's not i i just well i told Stephen this morning when we had a free morning chat said darling i am not a chatter Okay, Gigi, just, I'm not one to just watch somebody because they happen to be on. Nothing annoys me more when they have nothing to say. Mm -hmm. So uh, the reason I even set up my morning program the way I did on Blab was it's very specific. You knew what to expect. Mm -hmm. I did my best to meet those expectations, and that was it. And so that's how I'm approaching this one that's what works for me yeah i mean that's that's networking with a purpose isn't it i mean carlos has a purpose and and oh yes and his is very targeted i understand that it's just that 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 moving it past um the little piece that i want to do doesn't fit with me right now because actually i'm balking at just being a broadcaster i love this because we can have a conversation 
And so I don't want to be just a broadcaster. That's why I, I want to make sure it could go into Facebook. They could join the group. We could continue discussions, not necessarily live, but we could can you continue those and ask questions of each other and what have you within the group and then come together here on Fire Talk and get ready for the week and have time to maybe talk about what had been happening in the group or something like that. But that's why I need to have it very focused. I can manage it. I can be consistent with it. If I'm going to commit to something, a year on Blab, trust me. I, I celebrated one year and did my last show. Every morning when I commit to it, I, I just do it. So I have to be careful of what I'm committing to. <laughs> Charlene, I just don't uh, understand one thing, because I think you're doing something with uh, helping people with positive uh, engagement and positive influence. Yes? No? Your, 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 your theme. What I'm you. helping people to do is to think differently so that they can grow their businesses. And if they de determine that they're not able to, I can help them do that. Okay. But then now that's where I wanted to ask you. So now you have these people and what Stephen has found, which is profound in, uh, uh, what is that called again? Um, the, uh, the new platform, Stephen? Smile time. Right. With, with smile time, you can engage with the people rather uh -huh. than speaking to them like right. on Facebook. And you have the crowd that is there, a lot of people in business, why would there be a need? What is the application that that uh, FireTalk has that that the other one doesn't have? I don't, I'm not sure. I get well, that. FireTalk would be the once a week where it's scheduled yeah. and it's um, done on purpose, and you you it doesn't have to be brought into Facebook because it's going to be up to a one hour program once a week. The and other is three to five minutes. Is it because it's scheduled and you have to commit to a ticket? Is that your reason? That's part of it, yeah. Okay. And I'll be able to promote it. I can add it to, well, my VA will do the edit to the schedule of promoted links and um, to spread the word to the network. That's the idea right now. But imagine the power of, in Facebook, you schedule an event and you can click off all the people that you want to attend and that goes out and they know that it's going to be. Oh, right sure. I'll do it on. Oh yeah. I'll schedule a Facebook event. Oh, absolutely. That's part of any promotion that I do. Uh, because the thing is that I have to be careful. I don't, I don't have to be careful. This is how I work. Every Wednesday I host a business networking meeting at 9 a.m. Eastern time for one hour using the zoom platform. Mm -hmm. That's uh -huh. every Wednesday. I have a presenter. We have attendees at Q and A with the presenter intros, and then we're done. Right? We we exchange contact info. It's strictly business. I'm simply a host. Mm -hmm. When I was doing the Blab program, and what I intend to do with the Smile Time at this point to go into Facebook, is to have a three to five minute content rich piece to spread the message about the importance of knowing so that you can grow of knowledge and education and um, being in business and what that means. But then having a forum, if you will, a hosted program that I actually participate in the discussion um, once a week. And that's it. I mean, that's just the framework I'm working under. Um, I do webinars. I do. I was doing hell. I did a podcast for a year. I've done um, a lot of different things and where I work best is trying to be very specific as to what I'm using the platform for and what I want the end result to be. So right now that's where I sit. It could be everything goes on smile time. Yeah, yeah. It could be, but now we're going to get back to Stevens where I become a producer and how much do I have to pay attention to everybody else mm -hmm. and all the activity going on and I can't participate or yeah. I can't manage the program. Yeah, I don't know yet. I haven't tried it yet. So coming back to the raw chocolate show, I mean, when we did the, this morning, say we had 200 viewers and 50 people involved. The problem is that we're sat here on the platform now, and we're talking, and we can't see Facebook. At least we should. I've closed all Facebook windows. I switched my phone off, and I'm concentrating on being here in the moment. 
if you're going to do something on Facebook and it's going to be longer than five minutes, you need to have somebody watching the chat there yeah. because you've got to be able to reply. If people make a comment and the reply comes an hour after the show, then the moment is lost. And that, to, to, for all of us, it, the situation is if somebody gets a reply within minutes, then they're impressed. If they yeah. get a reply an hour to the yeah, that was my gone. concern. That was my concern. Yeah. The other, yeah. And another thing is that there could well be, because I'm, I'm the cat's out of the bag. I'm writing a book, and the book is called Create Your Own Video Chat Show. And of course, I'm interested in everybody who's interested in video chat. So when I do a show, and if it goes on Facebook, I want somebody to be actually catching the comments because one of them might be a sales lead. Yep. That's, That's it, Stephen. You just articulated what I was feeling, that unease of if I have an hour long program going live streaming into Facebook, not only do I have you within the live stream with me, the comments to the side in here, be it whatever platform, yeah. then there's also those who, who are thinking that they're a part of the conversation on Facebook. That's, That's right. not what I want. If I have, I can control the environment here for the up to the hour. Can always share this out as a, a separate video, right? Um, but the three to five minute, I'll invite the comments. I can respond to them. That's why I'm going up to five minutes, figuring the content's three minutes. <laughs> and then I can, you know, engage a little bit. Yeah. But it, I mean, so it's, it's it comes back to that management from producing. Go ahead. Right. It's a different scenario because if you've got artists coming on and the artists are actually performing, then people are actually watching the artists, they're not commenting. So it, 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 will you feel that's right? Well, Carl, even if they are commenting, though, they're not expecting response. Right. Right? They, are, they understand that the artist isn't going to stop doing whatever it is that they're doing to pay attention to them. They, it's understood. If we're in a chat area, though, where it appears here we are responding to chat, in the live stream right now, I'm going to feel rebuffed if I'm on Facebook and I'm completely ignored. Like, wow, well, wait a minute. I, I thought you were saying that you were paying attention to us. Well, so, I, 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 it's an think, idea. Uh, I think what you were saying, and I usually, uh, I was an early adopter of uh, a blab. I've done streaming yeah. from, from like uh, 2000 something, but at any rate, I have a person that it usually we had in Blab was the big thing is a co-host because right. it's wow. difficult to follow and watch the chat. And I noticed with a lot of professional webinars, that's the worst part of it. Guys are rambling on about the new functionality that's in the thing and nobody's watching the chat or they're picking specific people and, and you know, people just, rumble on through the whole thing and then ask for a few Q and A's at the end where you've forgotten. So I think that that's a part that is going to have to be put in is you've got to have an assistant and a, yeah. and a co-host and what all these platforms do that you can choose now is you could be doing yours from Indiana and, and Steven across the pond could be your assistant just to monitor. So yeah. that, yeah. Well, there you go, Stephen. You've just been elected and put up for option yes. as, okay, no, no. as my, well, my well, helper. This is a, this is a point that, that came across. Carlos and I have been talking about this for months, but since since the Empire days and Blood days, is that we can all help each other. And whilst it might be a slight jest to say that I will come and help with all your show, I'm more than willing to come and help with a few. And, and, and we all work together. It's a networking thing. I mean, coming back to, to your point, Carlos, about having a co-host, when we do Blubbing for Britain, uh, I host the show and my co-host is John, John Upton, and he takes care of all the comments. So, yeah, two people on the show is a minimum. Um, and with Raw Chop TV, I don't think Dan's watching this because Dan is the host. I co-host with him, but we now need somebody on Facebook as well. And his wife, Paula, she doesn't know yet. She's going to handle the chat on Facebook. Boy, this has been a show of reveals, haven't it? <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just basically it's evolving. We're just so lucky to have so much choice. Yeah. 
again, well, that's why I'm letting everybody else do all. That's why I, when Blab stopped and I saw the mad rush to check out everything else, I just said, you know what? I'm going to grow my little group. I'm going to let people know I'm over here. You know, no, it's not interactive yet, but we will be. And when the time comes, I'll let you know how that looks. And you all did the work, thank you very much, so that I could have a selection to choose from. Well, you know, the one thing that I wanted to bring up on why I'm focused on the network part, this is mm -hmm. something I had learned in the early days when we were pioneering this uh, microwave television versus the incumbent, uh, you know, cable companies and the satellite. We were the only other alternative. So we had a, uh, a, a Russian man who was, uh, you know, uh, during the time of the big influx of the Russian-American Jews, and uh -huh. he was the top engineer in our company that created all of this networking. So he and I would discuss things, you know, animatedly every day. Oh, and how I, exciting. I, what is the point? I watched him invent that satellite TV dish that looks at the three different satellites or eight uh -huh. now at the same time. This man, uh, uh, I forget his name offhand, but the man invented that in front of me. Love it, the, love it, love term. it. So at any rate, I'm asking him about the network and then he explained to me, look, you see, you have all of these people, HBO, Showtime, this one, that one, and the other one, and they have to get the signal from here to there or their show from here to there, your show in Indianapolis, Stevens. So you have to have a network for it to go on. All these platforms, it has to go through the network. So I'm like, okay, great, that's fine, that's wonderful. What's your point here? The person who owns the network owns it all. That's how you get the access. That's where I'm looking at the type of show that you're talking about doing. This is what I would like to look to see on the network. There's only five to six or seven networks in the entire U.S. They control everything. Uh, CNN, Disney, this one. So I'm never going to get to see the Charlene Burke show unless right. I find it. And then I got to go find your show, but your show might be at the same time as Stephen Healy's show. So that's where I'm looking at cobbling together a new 21st century network made that's up what i heard you say to be honest with you that's what i heard you say because when i said you know have a single page right what i was thinking was the old the old tv guide <laughs> yeah, yeah just showed my age i know can you see the yeah okay anyway so, yeah i thought i was safe with the beard there um you know the i was that's what i was thinking it was almost like a channel guide just for that day here's what's coming up i am on that day so while I promote that page, right, with my link on it, I'm promoting everybody else at the same time. And exactly. we essentially, I know what you're saying, and I would love to have my program as part of somebody else's network. I don't want to be a part of, I don't think I want to be a part of owning a network. I don't have the background for it and I'm really not drawn to that but to have my right. own television program non-interview type television program because mine won't be an interview I don't I don't do interview programs I want discussion around a topic mm -hmm. I want like a panel discussion of just the everyday person sharing how this worked for them or how it didn't so I'm here to have you guys tell me how to do this you know and with that, of course, comes the sharing of contact information that says, I could really work with you. Let's have a conversation. This is fascinating. I, I got an idea from what you just said, Carlos, and, and yourself, Charlene, is that you, you've got the page which has got uh, all the events on it. In mm -hmm. Facebook, we'll put them in order, and you can just scan the list. But allied to that, on the page itself, you share your live transmission out to that page. Yeah. So anybody, yep. anybody going to that page can see all the different TV channels that are on now. And people can show up just by going up and down. The well, page. you can, except now you have the, the only issue yeah. I see with that is Fire Talk. I'm going to need something else to live stream right. into that, aren't I? 
Yeah. And so that's not going to, you know, that leaves me out because I don't want to deal with that part. I'm glad to be listed. I'd prefer to have you on here. Um, I, I, what I was talking about with the page was actually a website, part yep. of a membership site of some sort, right, where um, you are listed on there in a nice format, again, and, and um, that it's a calendar page. And on that calendar, it can look like a calendar, something people are familiar with. You have just a little logo and I'm, you know, so-and-so, name a show, such and such time on fire talk, name of show on smile time, name of show on whatever live stream, Periscope, whatever live stream that they're doing. The idea is that you pay to play, small fee to be on that site. Yeah. And with the agreement that you all promote each other by simply sharing this in addition to the single share of your, uh, your own link. But to be done correctly, to be done nice and polished, some of these directories that I'm seeing, it's all well and good, but again, it's free and it looks like it and it's difficult to navigate and difficult to manage. So anyway, just that's the thought. Just to add something in there, Charlene, besides what Stephen Healy and I had done, this mm -hmm. is where, you know, I'm into the avant garde. I have now, it may not be as polished yet as what you're talking about because I don't have the sponsors, which is what I'm looking for, but I have that already working. I can take, I, I have one person who is a, a, a paying show. It's a, uh, a hip hop show, a friend of mine out of New York City that does his show on blog talk and I put that in. Now, the capability that I have in playing around with these networks, like I said, I've been doing this since 1994. Uh -huh. So now so you have I the background. Can, right. I can take your show on Fire Talk and give you a tab in Facebook that brings your show from Fire Talk, not on See, I Facebook. think that would be fantastic. Uh, fantastic. Right. So you're saying, what do you need? You need funding. Uh, well, I mean, not necessarily uh, for for that part, but now the funding is the part that gets people committed and keeps me with the equipment because so far I'm experimenting with this and doing all of this out of my own pocket. But so you to, need funding to have somebody who is um, able to do the tech part to assist you with the tech part, if not take over on the tech part, right? Need and, funding and to have the, for the infrastructure of the initial website for it all to sit in and to look the polished look, right? Well, uh, let's say the polished look because that's what I'm trying to let you know. It's all functional now. If you go out to IKO, www.iko.haus, I have it built into the website. I have it built into Facebook. It's unsponsored. So it's, it's, it's polished as one man can code it himself. So you need and, funding to make it polished. Right. And it's a work. You need tool. funding to have places on the site for sponsorship for individual programs or pages, right? Exactly. Okay, and you might need an operations person to help streamline things. That's me. I'm the operations person um, to set up the process of who's going to be a part of it, pre-qualify, what type of show do you have, because I'm not going to promote a show that is stupid, for lack of a better word. You know what I mean, or right. that is so offline with what I do, I don't want to be associated with that show. Well, this you is know? where I'm going more towards, uh, Stephen would know that, I'm going more towards the art side. I, mm -hmm. I'm an old institute uh, art major, mm -hmm. you know, so I have all of this stuff that my, my primary focus is I'm coming from where, if you're familiar with the, the Bauhaus from uh, Germany, are you? Not the Bauhaus, oh, the Hofbrauhaus. Yeah, yeah, but... <laughs> the Bauhaus, B-A-U-H-U-S. Mm -hmm. They designed the skyscrapers, the Marcel Breuer uh -huh. chair. These were all the, you know, advanced artists in Germany that fled, you know, to the U.S. during the, uh, the war. At any rate, they had this forward-thinking school, but now that we have the Internet, 
you don't need to have the school in a physical location. So I'm looking more upscale. I have friends of mine that are poets, sculptors, artists, dancers. Oh, that's fantastic. You know, business people. But Carlos, so, all right. Cool. So now have, uh, so I've got an answer to that. You create that with the artists and the entertainers in mind, right? It, right. Can you not just mirror that site with a different face so that it satisfies the more business um, non avant garde type programming? Yes, you can. Well, this so. is what I'm looking <laughs> at. Analytics. I'm looking at the analytics mm-hmm. and I'm saying this is where I added in the guy who does a, uh, you know, an old school style hip hop show from New York City. People are looking for movies. They want to see pictures. They want to see business clips. So they're already looking and saying, look, this guy is alternative, but he doesn't exactly have what it is we want yet. <laughs> so, But he will. But it's in- well, it's just but- that I'm only throwing it out there because I, I interviewed a gal or had her on my program, my, my weekly networking. Mm-hmm. She has a women empowerment TV network. Started mm-hmm. at Voice America with radio, with the, you know, voice only. And then she's taken it one step further and is trying to set up a, a women's, basically a television network using, utilizing YouTube as a channel. Um, and I know that there's a little more behind that, but that's as simple as um, I can put it out there. The idea is that she wants a, a, a grouping of live programming that is all under her umbrella okay and it's all about empowering women and there's live stream and she's calling it i think a women empowerment tv or something very similar to that what i'm saying is that taking what you already do and you have the background to do it you could bring her network into yours exactly right but it's right. gonna have to look appropriate for her to associate her name with that network. So technically speaking, back in the day when I was programming, mirroring a site is no big deal. And having multiple pay structures isn't that big a deal for an accomplished developer. It's the design element and of course the development team that is going to make or break it in the end. But I think that if you start with where you are and mirror it once, then get that working well and then mirror it again, you have a viable product and actually a minimal viable product to approach funding for. So you don't Mm -hmm. have to rely on just a single one or two investors or somebody who says, yeah, I want to sponsor this set of programming. Mm -hmm. Instead, you could actually create a viable presentation for venture capitalists to jump in because you are going to be creating something that I have no doubt venture capitalists would want to be a part of. Now I've experimented with this, with shows that Stephen Healy and I have done Mm -hmm. blab and we had a blab channel on the website. It was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. People were saying, Oh, you know, and this was before blab figured out or actually even any of them, haven't really figured out how to put in a lot of these shows onto a website. Yep. And I see Spy Gadget is talking. He needs a front end man, woman. Yeah. To polish it up. I'm already doing it, but with just simple, um, what's it called? iframe code. Yeah. The I thing t- is that it can be so much more. I think part of what killed blob is that they thought taxonomy was the nonsense word that, and, and taxonomy truly is basically is how to organize, mm. organize by topic. You know, you don't have 500 topics, you have 10. You got, and then you have an allowance for tagging for, you know, separate. You only have 10 categories and you keep right. it where it's organized for mm. those people who want to find people, right? Um, <clears throat> there's just like the networks do in television and through satellite TV and others are very organized and they have slots and we have this type of programming happening here. I can go to Hulu and I can see it now. I can go to to Netflix and see their organization. That's what I'm talking about. 
Now, I may be mm -hmm. talking about something completely different than what you were thinking, but when you're saying network, that's where my brain went, was something like um, a Hulu or Amazon Prime yeah. or um, the others, right? Where right. You, you could grow, it's feasible, you could grow that big if with what you have now, but it's, yeah, so I'm saying take it past the initial sponsorship monies and maybe look at it as, you know what, let me get an influx of, of a couple of million that's handed out, you know, quarterly over however long in order to get the team in place to get the tech done and polished up. Because I think what a lot of these guys aren't doing when you talk about the uh, Netflix and so on in terms of thinking out of the box, they're not collaborating and bringing in a show that no. uh, on remote from the UK with Stephen Healy. No, <laughs> you know, no they're not doing not... that on purpose. What they're doing is they're buying licensing rights to something that has been produced and now is available on just video. We are yeah. talking about live streaming programs, which is the next big thing no doubt there's youtube channels that are doing very very well with live stream and yet they're they're not scalable they're just not scalable right mm -hmm. but they could be if they were a part of your network even on youtube right. using google live right which is now what it's called not hangouts anymore using that as a platform so what because if it's part of your network, pay for the privilege as a channel to be a part of your network, I am now under the umbrella of a fantastic area that I can get some promotional opportunities through awareness and um, broaden my audience. Yeah. Just a because that, See, you just see that's where my brain went. I, I agree with you. And, you know, uh, for what you're saying, you, some of the programming that you're talking about and that Stephen has is what people is are looking for. And I also think some of the part of what Blab had is just a point bluntly is the intellect and the intelligence level was kind of going uh, in the direction. The more they the messed movie. with it, yes. <laughs> Did you notice that? The more they tweaked well, the platform, the less the conversation actually was mentally stimulating. Right. Well, this was actually on the part of the owners I used to have uh, 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 long talks with that were simply not open to being inclusive and figured, hey, we have it all, and I know what they were doing. It's the same thing that my old companies that went down the drain did and go the way of the dinosaur is you have a bean counter there who's just looking at a numbers mm -hmm. game. And see, that's what I'm looking to avoid with progressive uh, type of uh, companies because I know that people would want to see your program. I know already that people want to hear and see what Stephen Healy already has the numbers. Yes, I'm in full agreement. Well, yeah. Stephen, this certainly turned into an interesting conversation. It? it did. You see, we are good at this conversation thing. We just need the, the topics, and cause it was brilliant. We, we brought everything to life. I I can now say, uh, uh, no shadow of a doubt, I've been in a brainstorming session par excellence because things have happened on this show, which is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Well, well, I'm looking forward to seeing what Carlos does with his. Please, let's connect just so I can oh, yeah. follow you and participate in something. Know my limitations on time and what have you. That's why I'm very, very focused on what I'm doing. But, um, you know, if, if part of my network can help, you never well, know. I just, uh, I, I just put the website out in the. Uh... Yep. In in the uh, in the chat, and let's see the Facebook uh, channels that are now uh, verified pages that I have. I'm gonna put in the uh, chat also, so you can see where where I I am now. This is something, of course, still from my uh, old days. Is I made a mock-up and a working copy of this of this whole thing that we we're talking about 
just so that I know ahead of time that it actually works. So now I know it works <laughs> and uh, that's where I'm at the stumbling block, you know, working with Steven is, okay, how do we get this to the next level and make it usable if I've already proven uh, the model without just it getting stolen? I think further chats will take place. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> that certainly does require further chats. So, Stephen, how are things over on the other side? On this this side of the world, uh, things. Yeah, are... because I'm assuming Carlos had never asked where you were calling him from. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm a New York uh, transplant down to for the last uh, uh, since uh, 2006, uh, North Carolina on the East Coast. Awesome. That's where, yeah, that's where this whole pirate theme is coming from. Okay. I made some fantastic discoveries about what Blackbeard and all the pirates were doing uh -huh. early on in American history, which led me to find out they were really the first American revolution. And yes, they, they were. were really inclusive and incorporated uh, Native Americans, runaway slaves. I mean, I was astounded by the history that I found out. And I thought, wow. Nobody ever mentioned any of this with pirates. Yeah. So that's, that's so we have is. well, we have the two of us now. I'm representing um, where I sit. I'm surrounded by cornfields. That's the other major thing about Indiana, Stephen. Yeah, you know, okay. Idaho has potatoes. Indiana has corn, I sure corn, remember. which I... is enough to make your mouth drool. Wow, so, I I sure remember that. And welcome, Newland. Uh, yeah, and then Leland has cornfield soybeans and sugar beets. Yes, pioneer sugar. Uh, so anyway, Stephen, how are things on the other side? I have a few minutes. I have a, a oh, one. Right, okay, yeah, we we do have a few moments. Yes, I'm in wonderful Wiltshire, uh, which if you think of, oh, Carlos has gone. Thank you, Carlos. That was brilliant. Thank you for joining. Yes. Um, yes, wonderful Wiltshire between Stonehenge and Avebury and Salisbury Cathedral. This is sort of a very historical county and my town is, is called Devizes and there are about 7,000 people who live there here, uh, okay. 23,000 in the sort of area and it's a beautiful place um, and it's very chilled, I'm chilled, I can program and I can blab and broadcast from here without any problems at all. In for actual fact we'll go, we'll go all out here and if this works, this is my, my backup. Uh -oh. This was my backup, um, and I'm just going to screen share just for a minute, and I'm going to go to the second screen, and this is Devizes Town Centre. Can you see it? Uh -uh. Okay. No. No. Oh right. Okay. You can't see. There's nothing on the screen share. No, it's just me and you. Okay, that worked well. Uh, uh -huh. Just a minute, let's, let's just try again. I know we're running out of time. Screen share. That one. Yeah, Leland is saying screen share didn't work. Uh, Leland, that's a perfect observation. Um, <laughs> right, okay, we'll edit that out. Of Leland's our Mr. Obvious for today, isn't he? <laughs> that would have been good. But it, Charlie, it's been a pleasure. Um, oh, it has, hasn't it, Stephen? I'm so glad you asked me to come on today. It's, it's been wonderful, Leland. Great idea for connecting us all together. Uh, and uh, Shelley and I now connected on Facebook and on Fire Talk, and who knows what can happen next. Carlos, thank you for coming in and joining us. Uh, Leland, it's good to see you, mate. I hope the painting's finished, and uh, we'll see you all again. All uh, right, fantastic. Okay. Right, so that's a wrap. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Do you want to say thank you? to the people who've been in. Yep, good. Okay, and catch you all later. Bye for now. So bye everyone.